Be in the right directory, use the right secrets. Are those the right secrets? Did we need to build our CSS? Did the framework take care of it? Did this deploy need migrations? Did migrations run already? Which migrations ran already? It shouldn't take somebody half a day, three Notion docs, and five hand executed artisanal commands to deploy code to production. Because manually deploying code is error prone, tedious, and repetitive. Right now we have two Rust services being deployed manually, and we need to fix that before we, well, mess it up and bring down the site. In this video, we're gonna use GitHub Actions to deploy Rust services to fly.io and static assets to Netlify quickly, safely, and automatically. The better way to do deployments in general as opposed to manual is to use continuous integration and continuous delivery. The end goal of CI CD is making the act of merging and releasing code a mundane, ordinary event. Part of achieving this is automating the process of merging building and releasing code. The other result I'm looking to achieve today is to speed up the deployment process. Currently the fly.io Docker builders take about 250 seconds to install Cargo Leptos and 250 seconds to actually build the site itself. That's about eight minutes of waiting and most of that time is removable. The version of Cargo Leptos we use doesn't change very often and the dependencies in our application change slowly as well compared to how often our actual application code changes. So the easiest step to take is to start doing automated testing. Since we're hosting our code on GitHub, GitHub Actions is the most straightforward way to achieve this, although there are other options and have been for a very long time. At a high level, we need to write a GitHub Action that runs our tests and then does a build if those tests pass. GitHub Actions are controlled by a YAML file in the .github slash workflows folder in your project. We can set up a number of jobs that run when triggered by a selection of events. In this case, we'll run it on push or pull request for the moment and remove push later to only run this on pull requests. Now we need to install Cargo Leptos somehow in our CI environment. I've chosen to install it via Cargo, but there should be binaries available to reduce the time to install in the future. Because well, I asked about it in Discord and the maintainer said they're open to pull requests for that. Cargo Leptos test tests, runs, and builds two different projects one for the server and one for Wasm. This totals about seven minutes to install Cargo Leptos in GitHub Actions and about four minutes to run both tests. So we've lost about three minutes switching to GitHub Actions. It's unfortunate, but remember a bunch of this is going to get removed in the future. So with tests running on pull requests, our next step is to actually do the builds. In the end, we need a Docker image for fly.io and a folder of static assets for Netlify's CDN. As a short aside, Axum can serve static files, but there's really no reason for us to put the additional load on the Axum server to serve static Wasm, JS, and CSS files. Fly.io includes an option to take that static load off of your web server, but it's not a replacement for actual CDNs like Netlify. And I already use Netlify for the old site, so I can continue to use Netlify as the CDN for the new site. There's no special sauce in the Netlify choice. I just already use it, so I'm going to continue using it. This has the added benefit of not needing to muck with DNS when I actually want to do the switch over from the old site to the new Wasm site. So let's focus on running the build. <laughs> Okay, so setting up CI isn't always sunshine and roses, even when you know what you're doing. Luckily, it was just a matter of putting all my braces in the right place and getting GitHub Actions to accept the YAML file. Now, GitHub Actions allows you to use basically code that third-party people set up to make your life easier. The first of which is official, and it allows us to check out and set up our actual Git repo. That's Actions slash checkout. Then Rust Toolchain and Rust Cache allow us to set up the version of Rust that we want to use. In this case, it's a nightly version, as well as cache the dependencies, which we'll show why that's important later. Then fly.io has an action to set up their fly control CLI, which we need to actually build and push the Docker image. And finally, because we're shipping all of this to GitHub releases at some point, we're gonna use an action for deploying to GitHub releases. This action runs whenever the main branch gets pushed to. So whenever we push or whenever we merge a pull request, it runs tests, if those pass, it runs a build, then builds and pushes the Docker image to fly.io. Then it sends the binary and the wasm that we've produced along with all the other static files to a GitHub release. Doing it this way means that we've released our assets into the Docker registry on fly.io and also set up the static files for deployment to Netlify. This makes it significantly easier in the future to write a workflow that is only responsible for deploying those pre-prepared assets. Remember, at this point, we know that the Docker image is good and we know that the files and the static assets are good. So if we want to execute a rollback, all we need to do is tell Fly to run the Docker image and tell Netlify to redeploy these static files. GitHub Actions will allow us to do this with a repository dispatch, which is effectively what they call a webhook. But before we get to that, it's important to note that Rust Cache is caching Cargo Leptos, or any binaries we install, as well as all of our application dependencies, which is really nice because our runtime booted up to about 20 minutes 
And caching our dependencies and installs brought the entire workflow down to three minutes, which is less than we had on fly.io. With the Docker image on Fly's registry and the static assets in a GitHub release, we can respond to the creation of that GitHub release to actually do a deploy with those static assets. We'll use the released event type inside of the release event because that lets us respond to both a new published release as well as a pre-release turning into a release. The release event gives us the rest of the information we need. And with the Fly and the Fly GitHub actions, we're off to the races. Note that if you're trying to do this, you will need to actually create a personal access token because the workflow that deploys these assets and creates the release won't trigger the release workflow as sort of a GitHub automatic prevention for circular workflows. Using a personal access token gets rid of this restriction and the workflow that we have to actually create the release can also trigger the release deploy workflow. So we're good to go here. We've got three workflows, one for testing PRs, one for testing and building the release assets, and one for actually getting the deploys into production. Remember in the future, we can also set up that repository dispatch to trigger the actual deploy workflow so that we can roll back to any of these versions whenever we want to. And even though we're stopping here for today, there's still more that we can do to fulfill the promise of continuous integration and continuous delivery. When it comes to merging code, it can feel like clicking the button on GitHub is good enough. And if that's good enough for your project, feel free to keep doing that. It's simple and straightforward. But there are more advanced ways to get pull requests into the main branch on your repo. GitHub recently opened up their merge queues beta, for example. Merge queues solve the problem of needing to rebase all the active PRs whenever somebody merges some code. It places every PR that you've chosen to merge in a queue. Every commit then that is behind another commit is built guaranteed with all the commits before it, thus leading to integration of all of those merged commits into the main branch. Another option for this that is popular in the Rust community is Boars. Boars serves a similar purpose to merge queues, but is a third party bot that ensures the integration of all code into the main branch has been tested before it's actually merged in with all of the other commits that are going in. So you as a developer can always rely on the main branch being tested and not broken. With all of this in place, the workflow becomes submit pull requests, where a human is inserted into the step to do code review and decide whether it should be merged into main. Tests are run for that pull request to help inform the human reviewer and make sure there's nothing wrong that computers can automatically check. If the tests pass, the code is merged into main, at which point we do a build and create the release artifacts that we're going to need for the deploy. Once those assets, the Docker image and the static assets, for example, in our case, are created, then we can move on to automatically deploying. So the only time we need a human is to decide whether the code should get merged into the main branch or not. This removes all need to be in the right directory, check with five different people, open three different Notion docs, make sure you're using the right secrets, etc. Now building a fast, safe, mundane path to production is really important and top performing engineering organizations often have very automatic flows for this. But it doesn't stop here and there's even more that we can do. For example, with feature flags, you can use that either on the machine level or on the user level. So we can ship code to production behind a flag, and then at runtime, after we've integrated that code into production, flip a flag for certain users and test out to make sure that nothing has gone wrong. We can then use feature flags to gradually roll that feature out, and we don't have to worry about integrating new code into a deploy to make sure that that's happening. Instead, we can use a slider inside of something like LaunchDarkly. There's also observability, for which OpenTelemetry is a popular solution. Because once you deploy, you may want to watch different metrics or different user behavior to make sure that what you've deployed is actually still good in production. Observability can help you track build performance over time, service performance over time, as well as user activity. And finally, there are other approaches like deploy previews. Pull requests, as a matter of function, are human intervention in an automatic process. Being able to physically play with, say, a build of your game or a build of the site makes humans much more comfortable merging code into the main branch. And while you can do this through feature flags, sometimes you don't want to be that sophisticated and you want to have a barrier before the code goes in. So that's it for today. I hope I've convinced you that automating these processes is really important and that it's something you should spend time on doing. But of course, I'll see you in the next video and I hope you have a great day.